Hey, my name is Tom, showing you my side of Thailand. In this video, I'm going to show you my top 10 foods and restaurants in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Now, it's purely subjective because it's humanly impossible for myself or anyone really to go try and eat at all the restaurants and food courts in Chiang Mai. In this video, I'm not going to just strictly talk about Thai cuisines. There's going to be a couple of Thai dishes in my top 10 list, but there's also going to be other uh, international foods and cuisines from all over the world like Mexican food, Middle Eastern food, even Western food. It's not strictly just Thai food. I have all the maps and addresses for all the restaurants and all the foods that you will be seeing here uh, at the end of the video. So if you want, uh, you can check each of these restaurants and try it out yourself, see if you like it or not. So it's going to be at the end of the video if you want to check them out. The first dish on the list is called Khao Soi Gai, which is chicken on curry noodle. They also have Khao Soi Mu, which is the pork. I grew up eating all sorts of Thai food as well as Isan food and Western food all my life. Honestly, I had never seen or tried this dish before. The only time I tried it is when I came to Chiang Mai. So if you're in Chiang Mai and you never tried this dish, I highly recommend you at least try it out once and see if you like it. If you don't like it, uh, don't order again. You can go to practically any food court. They usually serve this. Number nine on my list is a small little restaurant called Little Istanbul. They specialize in doner kebab. I kind of randomly stumbled into this place when I was just checking out one of the night market in Chiang Mai. It was one of those moments when I wasn't hungry, so I could probably not eat for another two or three hours. But when I saw this place and they had uh, like a stack of meat in front of the restaurant and the smell of it, I couldn't go by this place without trying it once. Uh, you can see that the way he stacked the meat is that he would place the fatty part of the chicken on top of the stack and when it's rotating and cooking, the fatty juice would start dripping down, slow cook the chicken and it keeps the, the meat nice and moist. I also noticed that when he was cutting the, the chicken, he was using an electrical knife, uh, which is unusual. I've never seen anyone does that. Usually what they do is they would use a long, a very long knife and they would just saw it off. Um, this place doesn't do that. It seems like he has all the tools of the trade. So yeah, so far this is my favorite donut kebab in Thailand. I talked to the man and he said it's just been recently opened for six months. I hope by the time you check it out or the next time I go there, uh, I hope he's still around. And he should because his donut kebab is very high quality, it's very good. Okay, so number eight. So number eight is a famous uh, local uh, restaurant there called SP Chicken. It's located right inside the old city. The way they grill the chicken is very unique. So what they do is, if you see here, they would stack the chicken on both sides of the choco. And the choco is in the center of the chicken. And it creates something that's very uh, eye-catching. So if you're walking by or driving by, you can't miss it. Not only the way they grill their chicken is um, very unique and eye-catching, the way its grill is also very clever because when you stack the chicken right side up like that, all the juices from the chicken drip down away from the choco. The grilled chicken was very flavorful. I mean, it's very good. If you're in town, I would recommend you to check this place out. For someone like myself who ate a lot of grilled chicken in Thailand before, um, the grilled chicken here is good, but it's just slightly maybe above average. So what stood out for me in this restaurant wasn't the SP chicken. It was more uh, of the second item in the menu that they have there. Uh, it's called Nam Tuk Mu. Nam Tuk Mu basically translate into waterfall pork. And it's basically a grilled pork sliced up and then dipped into uh, some special sauce. What make the Nam Tuk Mu uh, special for me anyways is that the, the grilled pork, uh, you can just eat it on its own and it's absolutely delicious. But what they do is they mix it up with some sauce. So it tastes a little bit salty. Uh, a little bit sweet, a little bit sour, and uh, a little bit spicy. Now you can ask them not to put any spice. The way Thais eat these dishes is with sticky rice. 
but you don't have to. So what you do is you would eat a little bit of sticky rice and a little bit of the nam tuk mu or the SP chicken. So the flavor of the chicken and the flavor of the nam tuk mu is not overpowering. So number seven, I don't know the name of this restaurant. So I'm just gonna call it a big noodle restaurant. Uh, they specialize in this Thai style noodle soup. For a big bowl of noodle, it's 499 baht. I've never seen anything like it before. And if you can eat it by yourself, within 30 minutes, you don't have to pay. I wanted to try the big noodle and take pictures and photograph for you guys to see, but I went there alone. I couldn't get enough people to go with me. And I didn't want to order the big bowl because I didn't want to waste food. There's no way I could finish this bowl by myself. So what I did was I ordered like smaller bowls. They also have regular size bowls for around 40, 50 baht. If you're a noodle soup fan and you like eating like pho, the Vietnamese pho, that sort of things, and you like eating noodle soup, you should check it out at least once. So number six, it's called Bristol Corner. They specialize in uh, hamburgers and french fries, so uh, Western cuisine. This restaurant was just like minutes away from my uh, apartment, but I didn't try it until the last month I was in Chiang Mai because this place get pretty busy during the high season. And also I prefer Thai and Asian foods over North American foods. So I didn't try it until the last month when I was in Chiang Mai. The first dish I tried was your standard hamburger and french fries. The veggies looked perfect. It has like the, the lettuce there was perfectly green. Uh, it, it has no holes or cut to it. Uh, the tomato was slightly grilled and slightly salted and peppered. The portion was not your typical uh, Thai portion. This is a western size portion. When I first saw it, I thought I'm gonna have a hard time finishing it but eventually I did finish everything. The beef was premium beef. It didn't have much uh, ingredients into it. I think they only add maybe like a little bit of salt. And I think the burger here was so much better than your typical burgers in uh, McDonald's or Burger King. The french fries also like premium french fries. The restaurant uh, claims that they have the best french fries and so far, I have to agree with them. Anyways, I don't eat a lot of french fries and hamburgers, so this is like one or the two places that I ate hamburgers in, in Chiang Mai. But the french fry was very good. It was nice and uh, crispy on the outside, and as well as um, nice and tender and juicy, not juicy, but tender and soft uh, from the inside. A lot bigger than your typical McDonald's and KFC french fries. If someone else was doing this uh, top 10 list, who is a big uh, hamburgers and french fries fan than I am, then I would think that person would put this restaurant on your top uh, three or top four restaurant. But for me, I'm kind of biased because I prefer uh, Thai and Asian food over Western food. But this restaurant is very good, uh, highly recommended. If you're craving for some um, hamburgers or french fries, uh, you will not be disappointed to try this place. Number five on my list is the is it's just a bunch of restaurants and street vendors on a Saturday night market at Walai Road, which opens only on Saturday evening from 4 p.m. till 11 p.m. or midnight. Majority of the food vendors are located at the north end of the night market. I'll have the map and the address of all these places. Uh, at the end of the video. So if you want, you can check each one of them out and see if you agree with me or not. And you will find all sort of uh, barbecue chicken, barbecue pork, uh, as well as seafood, vegetarian dishes, fruit smoothies. Some of the dishes here can cost as low as 20 baht and up to two to 300 baht per dish. The seafood probably gonna cost you three to 400 baht per dish. Uh, so depending what you eat and you can, you know, you can try the, the famous Pad Thai for maybe 50, 60 baht. And the great thing about this place is that once you finish eating, you can, you can check out the night market there and, and do a little bit of shopping. Okay. 
number four is the Chinese dim sum. Now, if I ever go to Chiang Mai again, I think I'm gonna look for a cheap apartment next to this restaurant because it was that good. When you're ordering the dim sum, you're supposed to stand on the other side of the glass and you basically just point out what dish you want and they're just gonna grab it for you. Don't do what I did. I just went behind the glass and I just grab whatever I want. So you're supposed to go on the other side and just point it out. And they would grab the dish that you pointed out, steam it up for you for a couple of minutes, and you just go to your table and wait for them to serve you. So, so far, this is the best value dim sum I ever had. I went there a couple of times and each time cost me around 250 baht, which is around seven US dollar. The, the look can be deceiving, like from the outside, it doesn't look like a, you know, a nice fancy restaurant, but the quality of the food, the quality of the dim sum is world class. I ate a lot of dim sum back in uh, back at home and um, I remember eating at some high-end dim sum restaurants. The quality is just up to par to some of the high-end dim sum that I ate back in Toronto, Canada, but for the fraction of the price. All right, so number three on my list is the barbecue is the Isan style barbecue with sticky rice. So this place is located at the entrance of the Ga Sun Kiao shopping center. They open only on Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays evening from 6 p.m. till 11 p.m. Uh, this type of Isan barbecue, the meat are marinated with different types of herbs and spices. It could be a bit salty if you never tried it before. I usually order the barbecue ribs, uh, pork and chicken. You're supposed to again eat it with sticky rice, but you don't have to. Uh, it comes with a dipping sauce and the sauce is a little bit salty and spicy. It also comes with different type of veggies. I used to make this when I was back in Canada and I used to marinate different type of uh, meat like ribs and as well as chicken and I would get charcoal, not propane, because I think the charcoal enhanced the flavor. It has that smoking flavor to it. The, the propane doesn't have that. Yeah, so I used to make this type of dish back in Canada and it would take me very long time because you have to marinate the, the meat overnight usually and then start the charcoal, cook it, and it takes a couple hours, maybe an hour to do it and then you have to clean the dishes and clean everything up. So I appreciate just walking to this place every Thursday or Friday or Saturday and just pay maybe 80, 90 baht and have someone else to do all the hard work for you and you have a very uh, delicious meal. All right. My number two on my list is this Mexican restaurant. This is another uh, restaurant that's just minutes in front of my uh, apartment. I never tried this restaurant until the last couple months when I stayed in Chiang Mai. And the only reason why I checked out this restaurant was because it wasn't busy uh, during the daytime. There's only a handful of people in there. It gets pretty busy during the evenings. Also, I don't eat a lot of Mexican food back in Canada. Uh, usually when we go out uh, with my friends or family, we usually go to like Asian, Chinese, uh, Thai restaurants. So I decided to check out this restaurant and I was hooked with their food from day one. When I first ordered my meal and I was waiting at my table, there was a split uh, second when I was looking outside the window of the restaurant, seeing the gas station. And for a split second, I thought I was back, uh, back home in Canada and then uh, a duk duk drove by. The atmosphere of the restaurant is very uh, modern, very uh, westernized, and it's very clean. After I had my first meal here, I finally realized why it gets pretty busy during the evening because the food here was very, very good. It was amazing. Some of the best, actually like the best uh, Mexican food that I ate, and it happened to be in Thailand. The following day, I came back and I ate again. Uh, I tried something a little bit different. And then the day after that, I came back again. I think I came back four straight days after my first visit because I loved the food here. The ingredients were so fresh. 
They had their own homemade spices. My favorite one is the yellow spicy one. The food here, the portion is nice and generous. It's huge. You're gonna have a pretty hard time to finish it, at least for me anyways. So after my four days um, eating there straight, I had to stop myself eating there. Not because I don't want to, it's because I was on a budget and I couldn't afford going there every single day because one of these dish costs around 200 to, to 250 baht and some other dish could cost over 300 baht. But on average, it's around 200 to 250 baht and that's way over my budget. So I had to stop myself from eating there every day. So instead of going there every day, I eventually went there maybe once, twice per week. Uh, so I usually come here around like noon or one o'clock during the evening, especially during the high season. This place is super busy. I ate here only during the, the daytime and I only remember once I, eat, I ate there during the evening. And for uh, whatever reason, um, and this is just my opinion, uh, the food, the quality wasn't as good when I order it during the evening. Maybe it's because there's too many customers, there's too many people in the restaurant and maybe uh, they don't have enough staff to prepare everything so they have to kind of rush it. But again, that's uh, my opinion. I only come here during the daytime. If you can go during the daytime, I think the food tastes a little bit better when they have more time to prepare the food and not rushing it with 50 customers in, in the restaurants. And if you want to try amazing Mexican food in Chiang Mai, you got to check this place out. It's very, very good. All right, so number one on my list is a uh, spicy Thai sausage. Uh, and this, I don't have the address for this place because we drove maybe an hour north of the Chiang Mai city. So it's somewhere up north on the side of the mountain. It's not your typical restaurant. It, it didn't have like a ceiling, it didn't have a wall. They have like a small bamboo tent or a place where you can sit away from the sun or the rain. But we decided to sit at the back next to a small stream of water flowing down the mountain. So we're eating outdoor in nature. You can see butterflies. I haven't seen butterflies in like so many years. So. You can see the stream of water flowing down the mountain. Uh, it's very different from other restaurants. And there's just like a bunch of tables at the back and you just sit down, grab a cold beer or grab some food. There's no air pollution. There's no noise. There's no people walking around on the sidewalk. It's just you, nature, and your friends, as well as home-cooked sausages. These sausages are a little bit spicier than your typical sausage. It's made out of pork and it has all sort of herb inside the sausage. It's very tender as well as a little bit spicy, but not too spicy. It also has a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not like they added sugar or anything like that. The sweetness came from the, the meat. It was a combination of the outdoor, the stream of water flowing down the mountain, the butterfly, the group of friends that I came with. The home cooked sausage made it this my number one uh, on the list because it was the most memorable moment uh, for me uh, in Chiang Mai. All right, so there you have it, my top 10 foods and restaurant in Chiang Mai. So you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars or even $20 to have like a top notch, high quality food in Chiang Mai. All right, so that's pretty much wraps it up. So if you want to know the address and the location of each of these places, except for the number one, because I don't know, check out the, the link here. I'll just put, I'll post up the link here. If you have already subscribed to the newsletter, check your inbox, you already received it. If you can't find it on your inbox, uh, check your spam or junk mail. And if you still can't find it and you're already subscribed, just uh, use the same email and subscribe again. Uh, you won't get a duplicate email. It'll just overwrite the previous uh, information. And if you're using a smartphone, you won't be able to see all the links around this page. Uh, so just click on the, the little icon on your top right corner here. It has this exact same links. Um, but yeah, so if you watch it this far, uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it motivate me to do more of these videos because if I know people enjoy it and like it, then 
I want to make more. So yeah, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, that's fine. Uh, you know what to do if you don't like it. If I get enough people giving this video a thumbs up, I'll probably make a, a second version of this next time I go to Chiang Mai and I'll probably have another top 10 list because there's so many foods and restaurants in Chiang Mai. There's no way I could cover it in just one video um, or two videos. Uh, so yeah, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new uh, videos coming. And by the way, uh, I try to upload my video every week on Friday, but, but these videos take so long to make. Um, like this video that you're watching now took at least two weeks to edit just editing and that doesn't include the time that I go out in Chiang Mai and film all these uh, spot and food for you so it takes a long time so please be patient I'm more of like quality over quantity so I like to make things uh, as good as I can and not just like uploading it whatever so but who knows maybe later on I'll change my mind let's see so that's pretty much it uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer them so uh, again thanks for watching and i'll see you next time you can sample it <laughs> it's good sap sap live okay sap live oh it's good จานห้าสิบจอถ้าเป็นคีทีสี่สิบจอจานบอกให้กินที่นี่ก็เป็นจานนะเอาเป็นจานเอาตำนี่ตำส้มมียำ